Let's celebrate this month. Let's celebrate this week. Welcome to the Big Weekly Blend Podcast, the companion to our Big Weekly Blend magazine. Okay, so now it is part two of our big weekly blend show, and we're going to eat, drink, and be merry with Chef Ivan Flowers. Uh, Ivan is a five-star chef. He's also a culinary instructor, and he teaches teens in Temecula how to cook, which is always exciting because I think this is a life skill all kids need to learn, and so do we, as many adults do. Right, Chef Ivan? How are you? Good, Lisa. I'm good. Good to be with you. Hey, you know what? We're excited about this because uh, you've got a great recipe of uh, baby pears dipped in ganache, right? And so uh, this show airs on December 3rd, and we talk about the holidays of the month and everything for December. And apparently it is Pear Month, National Pear <laughs> Month, and it is World Pear Day. So, like, you know, you, you knew what was happening, didn't you? You were, you were prepared for the pear. I was pre I prepared very good. Yes. Yeah, that was good. That just, just flew out of my mouth too. That's weird. <laughs> That's very good. That was good. That was good. But baby pears, where do you get baby pears? This is, I've never I was actually, baby pears. There's a um there's a uh counselor teacher up at Temecula who has very large property and she has these pear trees. And they're baby pears. So she gave me, I sent some students over, <clears throat> excuse me, to pick them. So I was inundated with all these little baby pears. So the first thing I thought, and they're really sweet, really nice. They have a stem on them. And the first thing I thought about was dip them in ganache, you know. And they just, between the ganache and the sweetness of the pear and the velvetiness of the chocolate and the cream, boy, did, did it work. So this is interesting because so you're not going to cook the pears because they're babies. You you just yes. you don't. Okay. Now the ganache. Let's talk about ganache because yes, um, it's a little bit more than chocolate, right? It's a little bit more than you put cream and you know, chocolate chips melted together. Right. There. Exactly. And people, you know, they get like really weird. How can I make this? They make it a lot in their head. They make it more difficult than they think. Basically. You're using a one-to-one. I use the semi-sweet chocolate, um, and you use one-to-one ratio. It's very, very simple. You can either use chocolate chips, or if you have the bar, you take a chef's knife, and you kind of just, you know, um, slice it up, crumble it up. You bring the cream to a simmer. You pour the hot cream over the chocolate, and at first, when you mix it, you don't think anything is going to happen because it kind of doesn't, Nothing happens for a few minutes, for one or two minutes, and then it starts to come together. And you get Mm. this beautiful, shiny, gorgeous chocolate, and you simply just dip. And you can dip a lot of things into ganache. I did pears. I've done it with Doritos and Cheetos uh, with students where we had a lot of fun. (laughs) Strawberries, green beans, um, you know, cookies. So it's very, very, very simple. Bacon, absolutely bacon. Bacon, bacon pretzels. Absolutely. I like the pretzels. pretzels. Pretzels, bacon, yes. Wonderful on Ooh. bacon. And then you finish now, with a little French sea salt. Oh, I like that. Now, can mm-hmm. we spike the ganache with some sea salt caramel bourbon? Yes, absolutely. Ooh. But absolutely. you do it like at you the can... end. You don't want to put it at the beginning. You want to do it at the end? No. Because of the cream? When it comes what together, do yes. Let it come together and then put a little bit in and then taste that. Because you don't want to water it out too much because you want it to be able to coat. So if you're going to add a little extra liquid to it, you'd go with a little more chocolate. Mm. So we have these um, dried mushrooms from Melissa's Produce. They're like chanterelles, morels, all of these dried, you know. And we were Uh going to make this sauce because we did crepes with mushrooms and a mushroom sauce. Mm -hmm. And mm-hmm. they said, okay, you could cook the mushrooms in red wine, but you need to deglaze the wine. And we both looked at each other and went, okay, where's Chef Ivan? What the heck do we, what is, what are we, are we boiling the wine? What are we doing? And then we thought we're not right. wasting our wine until we talk to you. <laughs> so no wine went into our, our mushrooms, but they were good. Uh, oh my God, these mushrooms. Yeah. And we've got crimi- crimini, criminis, 
the mini shiitakes, we still have some. So, yeah. and, and you just, you have to um, let them be moist. Everyone's favorite word. Um, you've got to soak them for a while, like 20 minutes mm-hmm. or something in hot, mm-hmm. hot water. And then you can. Yeah, you we, rehydrate we them. them. Yeah. Yeah, we we rehydrated them, but they seem to when they are dried, they I don't know if they just soak up the flavor more because of the hyd- de- rehydrating them kind of process. They they're seem to really they're very soak up. they're very intense. Yeah, they're very mm-hmm. intense. I like mm-hmm. to use them like when I do my lobster bisque, I put it in a dried port um a dried um I think a porcini or yeah, it's, it's been a while. I I put yeah, it I into the stock. Yeah, and it it puts out such an incredible flavor, you know, because when they dry them, they concentrate them, they hydrate them, dehydrate them down, and they get intense. Mm. So they're wonderful to work with. We did. Um, we went to a friend's house and we put them in. She was doing um, slow roasted um, short ribs, and she did it in um, red wine. <laughs> and yes. so, and it was it turned out really good. So we just threw the it's, mushrooms in, and it was yeah, like yeah, this earthiness absolutely. came into it. But um, yes. she did it in red wine and other things. But, it's um, so funny you say that. That's what I'm making tonight for tomorrow. Oh, <clears throat> I'm doing cool. short ribs. Yeah, they're in the oven as we speak. Oh, she did it in a slow cooker thing, and mm-hmm. by the time we put the mushrooms in, it this the the sauce just thickened. When we first got there, it was like oh, yeah. juice. Mm-hmm. And then it just thickened, yeah. and those mushrooms were like perfect. We put it with some yeah. mashed potatoes, and we had some really good wine from LD Wine, mm-hmm. LDB Winery. Oh, red wine! It was a feast. It was a little feast that yeah. none of us could finish. But short ribs, um, I you know I'm not a huge rib person. I don't even I've never cooked them, but they just fell off the bone, and oh um, yeah, they were good. That's a good oh, yeah. Christmas you, meal, you... isn't it? Oh, yeah. The the trick is you always make them the day before. You don't want to make them the day of and then eat them. You want to make them the day before, keep them in the sauce, chill them down, and then the next day bring it back on the heat or as many as you want. And when it sits overnight in in that braising liquid, it becomes very, very intense. Okay, you always so, want to do braised dishes the, 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 the day before. Huh, I didn't know that. Now, what about this deglazing thing? What are we doing with our wine? Are we ruining it? What is well, that? Like well, like with short ribs, what you're going to do, you know, there's a technique. Basically, you, you make a mirepoix, celery, onions, and carrots. You mm-hmm. sweat it out. You add tomato paste to it, which is called pince. Mm-hmm. And that sweetness of the, 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 the tomato paste kind of, just balances the dish and just as you cook all that tomato paste out then you put in you deglaze because you're going to have a fond on the bottom of the pan some of those vegetables and that tomato paste builds up on the bottom and you deglaze with a good red wine and then you take that down by half until it thickens then you go in with stock then you go in with an herb bundle you put your meat in cover it, oh. and go into an oven for about three and a half to four hours at 300. Oh. That's that braising. Heavy. That's true braising. Oh, it's delicious. That sounds like really good, you know, winter food. You know, we're getting into and that it's season. it's simple. Yeah, yeah, we want comfort food. We want that kind of comfort goodness. And I want to go back yeah. to um, what you're doing with the ganache because, you know, as soon as you hear a word like ganache, you're like, holy crap, I can't do that. Right. <laughs> it's I like, know. no. But, um, no. So with this, so you had baby pears, so you're using what is available. So like, you know, could we just take apple, slice them, then dip them and eat oh, them or of anything? Uh, any absolutely. Fruit? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Okay. And we could take bigger pears because not yes. everyone gets baby pears, but this is so, and they're so cute. You know, you want to yeah. give them little faces and say hi to them. I know. They they have that beautiful shine on them, that little stem. They're yeah. wonderful. They, yeah. they remind me of crab apples in a weird way. Yes, you know? they look like crab apples. Yes, but those yes. are a little tart. And you don't want to do too much with crab apples. No, do you, those are for cooking. No, you want to go. Yeah, you want to go. Yeah, you know, a little sweet, but tart works too. Mm. It's you know whatever you like. Yeah, I think that's the fun thing. I think you you always bring recipes that can be completely modified according to what you have. 
Mm -hmm. you know, and what you like. So this is something Mm -hmm. fun for the kids. So for the holiday season, ganache is something that kids can get into and be part of the celebration for the table, whether it's pretzels or pears uh, or, you know. Yes. And remember, you can make truffles out of them, chocolate truffles. That's what they're made from ganache. And what you want to do, the ratio is basically you're going to do eight ounces of chocolate to two thirds of a cup of cream. Then you put that in the refrigerator and it gets hard. You then take a little ice cream scooper and you scoop them. You can roll them in nuts. You can roll them in sprinkles. There's a variety of things that you can roll them in. And you have little rolled chocolate truffles, which are fabulous. Cocoa. As a Mignard D. They do cocoa. You know what? I I don't do the cocoa because it gets a little messy. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of makes it a little messy. I just kind of go into like a draze chopped pistachio or if you want to do sprinkles or coconut or different things. Oh. If you want to put a little togarashi, Japanese peppers and have a little oh. fun and, you know, light them up a little bit. But they're so easy to make and people get so nervous when they hear ganache. And it's just like when somebody shows you, you actually go, that's it. Yeah, okay. that's it. <laughs> so when you're making the ganache, you've got the, the sweet. And everyone, the recipe is linked in the show notes. It's right on the homepage of blendradioNTV.com or go into the cooking section on the site um, or type in ganache because I think this is the only ganache recipe we have because we've all been so scared. Um, but can we add some chili powder to the chocolate when you're putting it in with the cream? Uh, yes. Can we do that? Yes. Sure you can. Oh. Absolutely, okay. you can. Ooh, you could so add you a touch of vanilla. You could add, Ooh. yeah, Ooh. of course. Remember, you coffee. control the food. You know, I'll, I was just going to say, definitely coffee. Coffee oh. and chocolate, when they come together, are wonderful. A little bit of espresso. You know, some people will actually roll it in um, a little bit of uh, brewed coffee. Mm. Well, the other thing is, this is the gift giving season, right? And mm-hmm. um this is something like a kid could go and like, I'm going to take pretzels and do this and wrap it in a nice cool. bow or something. Right. Or cookies mm-hmm. and, you know, do something. Um, I think there's something special about a homemade gift. And especially mm-hmm. if you're on a budget, it's a way of like, Hey, I'm putting some effort in. It's something from me to you. Um, but what about like doing something, you know, Number one, this could be Christmas Day, this could be Hanukkah, this could be Kwanzaa, this could be New Year's Eve delights, right? But if you're rolling them into little truffle balls, you could you could make like a jar of truffles for friends. You could go to town on what you're dipping in according to what you're you know, who you're gifting, if they like specific things. You know? Yeah. The flavors are endless and also the presentation is gorgeous. You know, if you do all different toppings and stuff and lay them in a little box, people go oh. crazy for this kind of stuff. Oh, that's cool. And Think you about know what a we were talking about bacon? Stuffed pretzel. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Peanut butter stuffed pretzel. Mm-hmm. In ganache. Oh. I mean, you're there. That's the ultimate. Oh, wow. And mm-hmm. and um, candy canes. It's National Candy Cane Day on, on December 26th. Oh, wow. But I do yeah. believe um, one of the days, I think it's the 30th, is a uh, bacon day. So I'm mm. thinking that's we could we could be doing that. But you could take mm-hmm. so many different things. This is fun to do, but the candy canes would be you'd almost be making your own bark that way. Yes. By dipping it in. You know? Mm-hmm. Oh, I mm-hmm. like this. Um I'm and okay. Now have you ever gotten into gingerbread making? Because I know that that now, happens this way. I, I don't do a lot of gingerbread, you know? Or ginger houses, or you know, I'm not a tell you the truth. I'm not a big fan of ginger. I, it's really? just it's even cooking yeah, wise. Yeah. Huh, I okay. use it in, in in certain sauces and stuff, you know, sparingly. Moroccan chicken and different things, or if you do, um, oh, what's the famous uh, dish? The meat dish um, that uses ginger. It's escaping me. Salad button. But oh. other than that, I, I'm I, I'm light on ginger. Hmm. So, okay, December 5th apparently is National Comfort Food Day. What would you say is the ultimate? For comfort food? Mm-hmm. Just what we were talking about. I Something braised, like a short rib, 
um, or a good beef chuck, you know, three, four, five hours with a really good garlic mascarpone herb mashed potato. And I would do probably a little sauteed broccolini with a little lemon and Parmesan and then take that jus that it was cooked in with the vegetables and you go into a blender and you blend it and you add a little, a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil and some sherry vinegar and make a really, really nice top sauce to put on top. And then you sprinkle a little Pecorino Romano or a little horseradish just to wake it up. Oh, that's comfort. What's up with this horseradish sauce that's with ranch or something? And we had this in a yeah, restaurant. Good. Oh, I, good. I just, you could put anything fried and put that in ooh, onion rings, you know, French fries. I don't care what it is. It's really, mm-hmm. really good. And um, mm-hmm. since we talked to you, we've been in Louisiana. And ah. they know how to fry food. They have meat yeah, pies in yeah. that Louisiana. They're like little meat pies, but they're pepper meat pies. Like they're pepper. Yeah. And it's, it's almost like a Cornish pasty in England, but it's like an empanada. And they're so, yes. so yes. good. Yeah. But um, yeah. we were, Nancy had her, the best Reuben she's ever had in her life. And she's the Reuben mm. queen. Her best. Mm. Like, I think a good Reuben on a winter day is a good thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> any day. A good Reuben any day is good. You mm. know? Mm. I mean, mm. You can yeah, do a corned beef Reuben. You can do a pastrami Reuben. And it's something I mean, you can do at home that people always think go to the deli for. But we mm-hmm. we would still, you know, you could we would do it with corned beef. You know, people do that mm-hmm. on you yeah. know St. Patty's Day and stuff. But we used to do corned beef as our Christmas roast with corned mm-hmm. beef, and Nancy mm. would put like. Bacon in stages or roasted in stages and then put whiskey at the end, like bourbon or mm. sherry or, you know, and put cloves mm-hmm. in it, stick it with cloves and then smother it with um, dark mustard, like a really good mm. dark mustard. And from there, like the leftovers we made into Rubens with good sauerkraut. You've got yeah. to get the right rye bread. Do not skimp on the rye bread. The rye bread is key. Mm-hmm. Marble is really good. Why is that? Yeah. I don't know, but it is. And you've got a, a good Thousand Island dressing. You can't not yes. have the Thousand Island. It has and to have Swiss. It. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. Magical. The Swiss or provolone. Yeah. Swiss or provolone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For us, that, that's what we would do. Mm-hmm. But um, a good mm-hmm. Reuben, like, I think we get so stuck with, I mean, turkey after turkey after turkey. I think we should, you know, change it up a bit for the Christmas dinner. Yeah. You know? Do the yeah. ribs that well, you're talking of, about. Too. Yeah, a lot of people would agree with you. Turkey, I think people get a little bored with turkey. So, like for thanks, you know, for Thanksgiving, it's good. I wouldn't do a turkey for Christmas. I would do like a ham. I would do a prime rib, mm. or even vegetarian. It depends what you want. You and know, turkey. turkey can only kind of take so far. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot you can do with vegetables too. That um, oh yeah, oh god. I mean, yeah. you can really have a good vegetarian. Um, spread and we've talked about that before cheese boards um oh, all yeah. kinds of good things and hanukkah is upon us it's it's coming up in a few days here from you know um i think the seventh it starts and hanukkah i think there's good food because again like we got latkes like do you like latkes i love latkes i started making latkes with my grandmother when i was very young and when they're done you know <clears throat> Latka is, you know, you're basically, you're going to shred potatoes. You're going to take the excess water out. You put an egg, you put in flour or cornstarch, salt, pepper, different things. What I do is I put uh, borson or alouette, which is a soft herb French cheese. And I mix yeah. that into the latka. Oh. And then you go kind of not too thin, not too thick, and you get them beautifully golden brown. And when I was in certain restaurants, we would serve them um, if we wanted to elevate them with creme fraiche and back in the day, beluga caviar, which was just, you know, just fabulous. Wow. Or shallot confire, which is cooked in um, vinegar and sugar and a touch of raspberry. I mean, a, a good latke is like to die for. Some people put applesauce with their latkes. So like, sure, yeah. applesauce or sour cream, yeah. 
Nancy would make them for breakfast and roast them yeah, instead you... of fry them. Is that okay? To yes. Roast them? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You can bake them in a hot oven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you could sometimes we'd grate carrot in there just to give it mm -hmm. a little healthy kick yeah, and yeah. color. You can add things. Oh, yeah. she, she would do onions, like red onion, like, you know, because it's once things are grated, like, why not just put it all in there? Let it. And I want garlic in everything. I want garlic mm -hmm. in it for sure. Um, and on December 6th, it is National Gazpacho Day. So I think huh. that's interesting since that's a cooler soup for, um, you know, the holiday season. But then it's red, right? Gazpacho is red, so it's a nice color. Well, you know, it, it depends what you're putting in it. You know, the the trick with gazpacho is anytime I used to make gazpacho, if I served it in a shot glass or in a bowl, I use it in the spoon. I always made sure they were in the freezer. So it was super, super, super ice cold. And I put just enough tomato, just enough cucumber, you know, balance it out where, refreshing. you know, it's right. got to be refreshing. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like, ah, and of course you can make it. I like to make it a little spicy. Mm. I like spice. Listen, Louisiana, man, they do not mess around mm -hmm. with their spice. It's no, there. It is. Yeah, it's there. Hello. Welcome and to Louisiana. There. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to wake up we and just... you're going to feel good. <laughs> Yeah, I just did uh, Cajun black and fish last week with the uh, with the students, you know, with the clarified wow, butter and the very that? very hot. They were, you know, it was different for them. It's you know, it's an acquired taste because really you're putting on, you know, a lot of spice and clarified butter. You can take up to four hundred and fifty degrees, so you're kind of like burning the spice. It's blackened. I mean, it's 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 kind of burnt into the fish, so it's an acquired taste. But they liked it. Hmm. Well, that's cool that they like it, and and you know you go mm -hmm. for it, and because fish is fish can be interesting, and and fish, I think some people cook fish like Christmas Eve is like a tradition, isn't it? Is it? Oh Christmas yeah, the feast Christmas of the Eve? seven fishes. Yeah, I love the feast of the seven fishes. Do you have seven different fishes, like literally, or yes. is it you're... everything oh. from shellfish to fin fish? Oh yeah, it's all it's seven fish. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. When You know, Nancy and I are allergic to fish, but when we're in Louisiana, <laughs> which is, is, you know, you're in Louisiana and everything is fish. And, and I love it because um, the state um, gives, feeds, it pays the restaurants like a little kickback for using local mm -hmm. seafood, which I yes. think is fantastic. They yeah. do it for festivals, for local musicians and keeping things local. But um, they made this these baked potatoes in this one restaurant, Merci Beaucoup, and so it's a, more of a French-style restaurant. That's where Nancy got yeah. her really good Reuben. They yeah. took these huge baked potatoes, and then they put etouffee, if I'm pronouncing that right, mm -hmm. and then these giant, etouffee. giant shrimp on top. I don't know if it's a crawfish or a shrimp. It's just, it's like a big curly-whirly at the top that was you yeah. know, fried. And this yeah. was the deal for people this was a oh huge yeah deal this baked potato potato with etouffee whatever etouffee is. oh, oh um, yeah so that might be an interesting christmas thing i what? i remember i was in new orleans years ago there was a restaurant stella's chef bowman who did tempura fried jellyfish it was i can't even explain it <laughs> <laughs> well, they can fry anything in Louisiana. Seriously, yes, they, they can. fry. Yeah. And you know, we went. There was this um, in Natchitoches. There's a French Market Express one night, and it's a gas station diner, and they have a gas station food trail. And literally, you get po' boys, baked boudin. Oh. If you're in the South Louisiana, and all, oh, boudin yeah. is like a French oh, thing, yeah. you know, with rice. And they did hogshead oh, yeah. cheese, and they got us to eat hogshead cheese. I did it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, but um, I, don't I love head cheese. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no you no. Can, you, you go to go to Louisiana with us next time and take care of that. Yes. Um, but yeah, but we did it. But you, you must try what you can, you know. And the fried food. I remember that one night we'd done a back in our live radio show days. We used to be on those, and when we did them, and we had done a show, and it was like eight nine o'clock at night, and it's a gas station by the hotels. And mm -hmm. it's smart. And they just doubled their gas. I mean, these people are, you, you sometimes can't even get into the store. The lines are you so big. You can't even get in. Yeah, of course. They are known this for yam food. cake, yam cake, mm. and then their fried yeah. food. You can go in, you can buy wine. And that's what, of course, we did. You can sit in the middle amongst all the groceries and eat. It's funny. 
that you go and I love it. and we hadn't had half of these fried things. And the, the guy behind the counter is like, have you had this? Well, then you need to try it. We walked out with this pile of fried food and Nancy and I looked, I mean, really naughty girls, but they have drive through daiquiris in Louisiana. Seriously. So we had drive this eggnog daiquiri and it's eggnog mm. month, by the way. Mm. And so we had eggnog daiquiris and it's been written about in the New York times and stuff. And I'm like, Okay, this is probably the only way I'm going to drink eggnog. Do you drink eggnog? Because that can be weird if you not, don't know where who's making it. With the are the yeah, eggs okay? You yeah, know. I'm not a big eggnog guy. I, I'm not a big egg. To me, it's like a sip is enough for me. It's it's very rich. Yeah, it, it rich. got too much. But then we kept going. Let's have some more. And then I realized, no, you don't want to do that again. But, but speaking of sweet. December 7th is National Cotton Candy Day. And in England, they call it fairy floss. We used to call it candy floss in South Africa. Cotton candy. Yeah. Now, I've been in restaurants where they do stuff with that. Have you ever yes. made it? Yes. Did Many you? years ago, I, we there was, we bought the machine. We bought the, all, everything. And it sh- you know, it goes around and it, it shreds little threads and it comes like a, it just, it, it creates. And um, it's very sweet. You know, mm. and you, you you pour everything in and the machine does it. And it looks beautiful on the plate, you know, but mm-hmm. to me it was like it very melts sweet. so quickly. I liked it when yeah, I was it, a kid. Yeah, it's it is kind of like you're heating up the sugar really fast and spinning yes. it. Yes. You're really, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it's cool. Oh, you were talking about chocolates. National Box of Chocolates Day is December 28th. Mm. We've got mm. National Pepper Day. What's a pepper pot? Like the actual Not pepper? Sure. In the aisle. But Not they sure. also have baking soda day, bicarbonate of soda day. Listen, oh, those well. things are important. <laughs> that's important. You know, yeah. that's December 30th, just in case. 31st, mm. and I think you're going to like this one, other than it's National Champagne Day. We like that. Um, yes. Obviously, it's New Year's Eve, but it's National Vinegar Day. Now, the world of vinegars. This is something we should probably embrace more into our lives, right? As using balsamics, but also trying different vinegars for different things. Even baking, I know people use vinegar. Oh, for baking. sure. You know, people really, really miss the boat when they don't learn how to cook with vinegar. With all the different vinegars out there and the acidity, which is not that high. People think it's a lot higher than it is. And you balance it out with something a little sweet, which is a gastric. Learning to work mm. with vinegars in sauces, in glazes, is one of the best things you can do um, cooking. Mm. Same thing like with mustard. People kind of miss mm. the boat on that. Doesn't mustard have vinegar in it? Like, isn't it mixed? Yes. Like, they crush the actual mm. mustard pod things mm-hmm. and then yeah. mix it with vinegar. And then I don't know what makes it a yeah. dark mustard. What I don't know if that's just the All the different or... seeds, you know, how oh, it's, okay. or, you know. I mean, one of my favorite things is I do a Costa Rican swordfish, and I simply take a little sugar-free orange marmalade with oh. uh, mustard and vinegar, and I just mix mm. it up. I put it on the swordfish. I roast it in the oven, and it comes out. A little bit of breadcrumbs, a little Japanese panko on top, and it's just like, oh, boom, bang, you know? Now, malt vinegar, I grew up with that in England mm. and South Africa on, mm-hmm. on chi- chips, which is like a fat mm-hmm. French fry. And there's a yes. li- list, there's sloppy chips, as we'd call them, which were like thin, would be like French fries, thin but sloppy. So there's a mushiness yes. to it. And that's a whole other texture. And it's good. But actual chips, like if you make those thick, oh, it's like steak fries, basically. Yes. Oh, God, yes. yes. Oh, there's girl, nothing better than fish and chips. Oh. With malt, With vinegar, malt vinegar. I mean, when it's done yeah. well. Oh, my God. When I was in England, I, I remember I went to a really good. Uh, fish and chip place and it was like oh my god <laughs> it's awesome i mean really yeah. malt vinegar is and apple cider vinegar is really yes. good for our bodies if you get the one yes, with the it actual is. like good stuff like the organic i don't know because Bragg's is being sold out to somebody i don't know what's going on with that katie perry owns it apparently or is invested uh, in it and so is bill gates i don't know about what's going on with that because now i'm getting weird about you know you have to read read up on stuff you're buying but apple cider vinegar is really good for even cleaning, um, for refreshing a room, air freshener wise. Mm-hmm. It's like 
Yes. Apple cider vinegar is like the goodness of goodness and you can cook with it. And I think people, that's the one that people bake with, I think is apple cider. I'm not sure. Yes. But yes. It's good. Yes. It's good. Yes. Okay. So we got vinegar, believe it or not. I didn't know we were going to talk about that for mm. December, but um, okay. There's all kinds of like national date nut bread um, day. That's good. Yeah. Dates are good. Um, national. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce this. Pfeffer noose day. Pepperness, pepperness. I don't know what that is, but it sounds baked or something. Um, eggnog mm. day, pumpkin pie day, National Kiss oh. the Cook day. So that's a day yeah. for you and Tracy. Um, there you go. National <laughs> Fruit Cake day, and I think it's Fruit Cake Month. So that's yeah. always the fruit cake, yay! Um, <laughs> but um, oh, National French Fried Shrimp Day on December twenty first. There you go. Mm. There's Sangria Day, Hard Candy Day. Oh, there's, muffin a day, day. Every, there's a day for everything. And no kidding. Um, National Roast Suckling Pig Day. Oh, wow. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Who, how, who's going to do that in their backyard <clears> in Hawaii? <throat> Hawaii, they might do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, I just, yeah, can't, can't do it. <laughs> I can't. I, yeah, can't I know. It. No, because it's a whole, it's a baby. Um, yeah. National Maple yeah. Syrup Day. That's a big deal. You uh, have to get real maple syrup, the real stuff. Maple syrup. The real Some stuff compared to, Ooh. yeah. Yeah. I mean, once stuff. you've had the real stuff, yeah, you, you can't go back. I remember getting some from a guy in Vermont, and he was just uh. you know, even doing his own labels. And he was just, he you know, he's on the Food Network and everything, but he was like a for real cottage industry with his maple syrup. And Nancy and I, told, it was, no, there's not, you put it on French toast, you put it on, oh, yeah. waffle, I don't care. Cook with it. Cook with maple yes. syrup too. Ooh, could you put oh, maple yeah. syrup and vinegar together? Mm. It's, it, you know, a lot of people, when they do a ham, Lisa, they do a smoked mm. ham. So they buy the ham smoked and it's got huge amounts of sodium for four ounces. If you buy a fresh ham, which is the leg of the pork, okay, it's fresh. Mm. You take maple, good Vermont maple syrup. That's your sweetness. You put in really, really good apple cider vinegar. And you put in garlic and orange juice and some herbs. And you reduce it to a syrup. And you have a glaze on that ham that when it cooks in the oven, it candies the outside of the ham. And it's the most incredible thing and because of the maple and the vinegar working together. It's the way Ooh. to go. Oh, I'm liking that. Oh, and then mm -hmm. just imagine what you can do with it as leftovers, too. I bet you it gets yeah, right? intense. That's oh, good. yeah. That's, I want to bring out the mustard now. Who cut the mustard? Yeah. The same person who right? cut the cheese. No. <laughs> right. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So there's um, National... I never say this right, Chef Ivan. I know you're going to know how to do it. National Bulla Base Day. Bulla Base. Bulla, bulla, bulla Base. Yeah. Yeah. Bulla, bulla Base. So it's Bulla. Yeah. Bulla Base. Bulla what base. is that? Yeah. Base, is it's like base? a cipino. It's, it's a fish stew with saffron. And oh. um, when it's done correctly, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's very balanced. It's, you eat it with crusty bread and a good, oh. good white wine. It's, and a lot of times they put whole, like, small whole fish in and it's just mm. oh, it's to die for <laughs> no that's it because i remember you coming on a show year i mean this was years ago i think it was even when you and tracy lived up in arizona and you did this recipe yeah. and you had the whole fish on the plate and yeah i remember getting emails about this like he put the whole fish like with the face and i'm like yeah you're like that's how it's done so when you're talking about whole yeah. fish inside this bullia base are you putting like sardines and that kind of like little fishies or like the whole yes, thing? Yes, you put in uh, roger, you put in sardines, you put in small little fish, yeah. As a matter of fact, I just did a lecture with the students last week. How do you know if fish is fresh? You buy it whole. Well, how can you tell? Well, are the eyes bright? Are the gills super red? When you press the skin, does it bounce back? Or make sure none of the scales are coming off. It smells like cucumber. It smells like the oh. sea. It's fresh. Most of my career, I used fresh fish. It's the only way I knew yeah. that it was fresh. Do they get slimy? Like if it's not? 
Yes, you know the, the skin will get slimy, the eyes will yeah. get foggy, and the gills will get uh, become brown, and you don't want to touch it at that point. Is that it's why a, a lot of short... people smoke them, like smoke fish, as a way of preserving oh, yeah. them? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I love a good smoked fish. So like when you sturgeon, smoke a... salmon. Uh, mm. So is that smoked and of course... so it's preserved, and then you could put it in yes. a sauce or something? Like this? Yes, and then you can also do a cold smoke. Bacon is cold smoke. Salmon lox is cold smoke. We're just infusing the smoke and not cooking the fish. Or you can do grov lox, where you're salting the fish with brown sugar and salt, and and you're curing it, and then you're cutting it paper paper thin with cream cheese on a bagel with a touch of Ooh. lemon. Ugh. Oh, oh! Speaking of that, it's National Lemon Cupcake Day on, on December fifteenth, huh. and you mentioned uh, bagels. December eleventh is National Have a Bagel Day. Now let's mm-hmm. talk about bagels because you lived in New York City for a while, right? Yes, and yes. You know that there's bagel, there's bagels, and then there's bagels. Yes. There's there's the BS bagel and the real bagel. <laughs> right? Yes. Tell everybody how to find I have a good to... bagel. Can you make your own? Can a, a home yes, it's funny that you said that because about a month ago, I did bagels with my students. And I was really? hesitant because I had never made a bagel before. So I said, you know, so Tracy found me a really good recipe. I said, I, am I going to be able to do this? They came out like some of the best bagels they'd ever had in New York. I was amazed how, and they're not hard. It's not hard oh. to do. You boil it for 45 you seconds. You really do boil bagels in water. Yes. Oh, yeah. You put them in boiling water. Yes. You make the dough. You let it sit overnight. You form the bagel. You put it in the boiling water with um, uh, some places do a sugary malt. I did some brown sugar. And, it, and then you put it in the oven. You put whatever toppings you want. And it is remarkable the way they come out. So is that what gives you that the the sugar is what does that actual the chew. It, it, the chew and the the crust it's like the it actual gives you crust. the chew and the crust yep that's so when what you take it thing. out it's like the that's the crust and so you're not yes. baking it ever you're, it is all boiled no no, no baking or... you you boil it and then you bake it okay you do bake it huh, mm-hmm. this is so cool now mm-hmm. Reuben on bagel you do rye oh. bagels Oh sure. man! Well, you use rye flour, sure. I I I've whole, worked whole in a bagel. Whole wheat bagel. My first job in this country was working in a bagel, uh, a, a deli <laughs> in Florida. Good for you. And I had all these New Yorkers <laughs> come in and ask for a pastrami on a bagel. I thought they were donuts. I, uh, I had no clue. And you know, New Yorkers when they want their stuff, right? And yes, I don't. Yes, <laughs> yes. Man, did I have to learn how to move in that in that yes. deli? It was a food yes. court in a in a mall, and they. They taught me pretty darn quickly because I wasn't going to make it if I didn't learn fast what yeah, all these you gotta things move. were. Sense of urgency. The yes. It's the pumpernickel. Mm. That, oh, yes. The pumpernickel yeah. bagels. That's what was With my molasses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, is that what it is? So funny. That does it. Yeah. We were just, Trace and I were just talking about molasses and, and pumpernickel bread the other night. Yeah. So that's what is what the marble rye is, is rye mm-hmm. with the Pumpernickel molasses mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. right. The so swirl. Good because yeah. we love the swirl. Don't we always love a good swirl, whether it's ice cream or cake? Mm-hmm. Everybody wants a marble. Okay, so National Pastry Day is December 9th. Now, pastries do not have to always be sweet. They can be savory, and we like a good savory sure. pastry, like we're talking sure. meat pies. Um, yeah. National Lager Day, December 10th. Do you like a good lager? I always like I do. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. And what would you pair it with? This was the thinking festive time. Nice. Hmm. I'm going to those pretzels. I would. <laughs> Your pretzels. You know what? A, a very thinly sliced roast beef sandwich on a French baguette with Munster cheese, red onion, and Russian dressing. Oh. With an ice cold lager and a little bit of lemon in it works for me. So Russian dressing is the red dressing, not the Thousand Island. You know what Russian, Russian dressing is in New York? Ketchup, mayonnaise, and, and uh, cut Island? up pickle. Oh, Thousand okay. Island, yeah. That's Russian dressing. Okay. Why so they call I, it I'm Russian not, dressing, no. I don't know. Why do they? <laughs> what's that red stuff you see in the in the markets? The Russian, it's red, and it doesn't look. Ooh. 
well, I suppose that is what you're saying. Yeah, we don't know what's in the mystery bottle, but it's also National Brownie Day on December 8th if you want to be happy. Uh, (laughs) mm, And the the best baked, uh, you know, brownies um, have red wine in them. Just saying. And uh, National Biscuits and Gravy Day is December 14th. Biscuits Mm. and gravy, um, that can be a little bit, on the waistline with the with the um, sausage and the, oh, good gravy has sausage, right? That um, pepper. Um, and, well, yeah. If you're doing it with biscuits, yeah, they'll do it with sausage. Okay, yeah. so it's, while we were in Louisiana, we had biscuits for breakfast at our friend's place. But our other friend Eva made pear honey, and it's, it's uh, speaking of pears. So we got a recipe, and she got a different recipe, and, and she did both. Because she goes out to farms and gets her produce, and then she preserves and pickles everything. We were talking about her the last time we were on the show with you. Um, and we were at her, yeah, in Tucson. And um, she made pear honey, and it's really mm. honey made out of pears. Oh. And let me tell you, put that on the biscuit in the morning with a good cup of coffee, oh. and you are a happy camper. Oh, yeah. It does I'm taste sure. like honey, but it's made yeah. out of a vegetable instead of bee That's honey. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. good. And we've got, I'll, everyone will make sure sh- there's a recipe on our site. Just type in pear honey on blend radio and tv.com. It is absolutely delicious. We first learned how to do it on a farm in East Tennessee. And, um, mm. and, and they had this, it's the end of August and they had those, you know, those big brown pears. I don't know what their names are again. Um, the big brown, they go brown, like not yes. rotting, but. Yes. Yes. Anjou, Anjou, something like that. Anjou. Um, Anjou. Anjou. There's Anjou. Bosque. And the, yeah, these are, those are Anjou. Yeah. Yeah. And their, her pear tree at that point was losing its leaves and they were hanging. And so yeah. they were making their own pear honey and it was, oh my gosh. Wow. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm into that. But wow. So I think we, we've done good on the food for the holidays. I mean, December's pretty yes. darn good. This is very good. good. So. Start making ganache and have fun with it. It's a good idea for gifts. I think that's awesome. Yes. It's a great, yes. great thing to do. But happy holidays to you and Miss Tracy you and too. all your pets out there. And Thank uh, we you. will talk with you soon in January because okay. in the new year, we're going to unganache ourselves, right? Okay. Unlock yes. and unganache ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everyone, again, uh, Chef Ivan's recipe is linked in the show notes. And also just go to blendradioandtv.com and type in ganache you'll find it thanks so much chef ivan good good speaking with you lisa be well you too take care okay bye-bye thanks for listening to big blend radio's big weekly blend podcast you can keep up with our shows at bigblendradio.com and if you want to get our big weekly blend magazine just sign up for our newsletter at blendradioandtv.com